Um, but so another question I have is how did you how did you learn about GSH? Uh, what got you interested? Why, why did you trust us and not think that we're we're kind of like scams or something like that? <laughs> That's a good part. So how do I get uh, about GSH? Would be honestly, I was trying to look for particular agencies that are kind of interested in hiring talent from outside Canada. I was not sure if they are hiring outside Canada or inside, but all hands on deck kind of scenario. So I tried on everything I would say, but I kind of applied online and wrote a cold email sort of a thing to like six or seven agencies. Mm -hmm. And uh, Louisa from your team, I guess, uh, was the first person to contact me back saying that, yes, we do that. And we do, we are trying, we are growing up and we are trying to help people from all across the world to come to Canada. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's what clicked in. And how did I trust whether you guys are scamming me or not? <laughs> well, I would say, I would say it was not exactly a gut feeling. I had a feeling after talking to Louisa that it felt genuine. But anyways, I was not asked to, uh, you know, do something upfront or come up with something or deposit something upfront. I was just asked to give some sort of interviews and give examinations, give a written, which make me feel like, okay, this is a serious thing going on and it's not a scam because people who are scamming you will not spend their time kind of arranging interviews for you and asking you to give written exams, right? That's too much, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. So the, the, the test kind of gave it away. Yeah. That's good. Um, and anything particular you noticed about this process that, um, was it an easy process or, or did it, was it just too much? Like, how did it Well, I won't say it's too much. Uh, I won't say it's easy. I won't say it's too much, but that's the kind of process that would actually go all in your favor if you want to move to another country. I would say that. Mm -hmm. I knew it would be a long shot. I knew it would be a difficult thing to do. There would be a lot of things involved. Mm -hmm. So this was a process that made a lot of those things easier. So okay. that's what helped. <laughs> uh, okay. So... Uh, Tell me a little bit about the process. I'm sure there's a lot of people here or people who will listen to this later on who have questions about, so I mean, GSH contacts me or I contact GSH or a friend refers me or something. Or for some reason, they get in touch with us. What does that process look like for them? And uh, tell us what you experienced. Yep, so I'll say what my experience was. I think the process is ever evolving, I guess, with you guys, uh, is what I've noticed in the time frame that I've been close to. GSH, but what happened with me was I kind of went into the technical round with one of your panelists, then went into a, a coding round as well. And then the entire process actually started when you guys finally decided that, okay, there looks to be some sort of a potential in the candidates working out. I guess that's what your filtering criteria was, I'm assuming. Uh, okay. And then uh, 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 after that, what I thought would be a most challenging part was to reach out to the employers and to showcase my skill set. And that's where GSH came in very, uh, with all guns blazing, I would say. Because as soon as you guys had those opportunities, you were, you kind of refer to your candidates to those employers, which is the main bridging block that is needed for anybody to come into Canada, right? Uh, that's the toughest challenge. And that was one of the easiest thing that I could have probably faced because that uh, I did not have to do much. I only had to contact you guys and you guys did almost everything else apart from that. So that was a fun part uh, and easy part. I would say that process was made easier for me. It was, it was fun and easy for you, but I yeah, wouldn't say not for you guys. for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not for you okay. guys for sure. <laughs> yeah. I know how, how difficult it would be for you guys with what you guys are trying to do, but I appreciate it honestly on that front. Uh, then the next part of the process was, next is up to the candidate, right, to kind of clear those client interviews. Uh, and GSH was involved in every step of the way on the scheduling front, on seeing when was the availability, on whether I had some other doubts before or after interviews, or in helping me out in understanding what the nature of the company is like, the kind of work that they do, and the kind of expectation that they would have from a person who wants to work for them. So. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things were made clear to me by GSH, which was a very good thing because this gives you a brief background about what is expected in an interview, what you can expect. And uh, it doesn't leak your question paper for the skill set, but that's okay. That, that's the last thing you would probably do. <laughs> but 
Yeah, but then it helps you calm down before going into the interview, right? Because you know yeah. about the company, you are prepared about the kind of things that might come up and so so that so so it was again as I said that was again something that I was expecting to be a lot tougher than it actually became because of GSH. Okay. So okay. that part of the process, and then there are other processes post selection as well, right? So you guys go all ends from start till the end. So post selection, you took care of all the visa processes and all the figuring out how I'm traveling. I was surprised to meet you so at the airport even. I talked to them a multiple times, but he came in to pick me up at the airport. He told me he would be coming but with a party and with almost the team from the HR from my company as well. So it was a pleasant surprise and a good experience. And I probably, that's why I love you guys. So I probably would. Uh, that's why I keep connected to all of you and I try to keep being connected to Yusuf as well. And I keep referring all a lot of my friends as well. So. That's, I'm happy to hear that. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if we actually spoke at any time in the process. No, we didn't. Remember. No, no we, we, didn't, didn't. we didn't personally uh, get a chance to talk, but um, I'm happy that you had this experience and um, I'm glad that um, things turned out really good for you. So that's that's always great to hear. Um, but you also mentioned, um, okay, so so uh, once you came to Canada, how was that transition for you? Okay, so, so you landed and there were some people there greeting you from, from our team and from your new company, but there's also a lot of other aspects to this. Tell us about your journey from the day you got the offer and you decided that you're gonna take it all the way to to kind of settling into your first, you know, your the first place that you that you located to, um, like your apartment or or wherever you were. So, what what was that journey like? Just give us a little bit of a uh, insight into that. Well, to me, it was fun. Uh, I don't know about everybody else who comes in, but uh, I I like to travel, so I was looking forward to it. Anyways, and uh, settling into new places is not anything that is new for me. So, but that was inside the country. I have moved a couple of cities anyways, uh, since I was born. So very familiar with the process there. But coming to Canada, it was a fun part. It was exciting because I was looking forward to it. And then once I kind of got selected, the next part was to figure out how the visa process would go on. That's what took the most, I would say, time. And once all those documents got sorted out and everything, then kind of booking all those tickets, talking to employers, there was a slight delay on, on my side with the passports issue. So my joining got pushed a little bit, but yeah, everything worked out great for that. And then I kind of booked my tickets as soon as I got my passport and one week later I was in. So I didn't get much time in between to think about a lot of things. I just packed and came in. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So yeah, I guess um, uh, kind of being short on time doesn't doesn't let you kind of properly digest. Um, uh, yeah, the impact of it. Yeah, and, and and the impact of it, and and also overthink and start thinking about you know what what if this goes wrong? What if that happens? What if I don't like it or all these things? So it's good that it's there's a little bit of time pressure. I think that's a that yeah, yeah. I, I would say that, that works in everybody's favor. The the more relaxed timings you have, the more you think about it and the more confused you get. And I would not say I did not get confused about things. Of course I did. I kind of mailed every now and then to Yusuf to figure out, okay, I'm worried about this, I'm worried about that. Mm -hmm. I had a small kid and everybody has that impression that Canada is too cold, right? And so yeah. I'm like, I'm not sure with a seven month old baby, can I travel to Canada? It's too cold. It's going to be very cold and I don't know how my baby will take it. And you should call me in and said, buddy, you are not the only person who gave birth to a baby. Don't worry about it. You did not do anything anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I have three kids and they are fine. Everybody has kids here. Everybody's kids are fine. So don't worry about it. Just come in and you will be fine. <laughs> great. Great. Okay. So, so your family is also enjoying it um do they feel comfortable um are they happy with your decision to do this or how do you feel 
I, I hope so. Uh, my daughter okay. has no way to communicate right now with me to tell me if she's not happy or not. <laughs> but she's too young for that. But yeah, so far my wife is finding it okay. Uh, I do have an extended family in Canada anyways, both in Vancouver and Toronto. So that helped. Okay. And they kind of helped me settle in too. And every now and then I can bug them up if needed for anything anyways. So. Okay, perfect. And you also have, um, you know, you also have us, so... Okay. Yeah, you guys, you guys are anyways there. So that's what every Friday evenings are there for. I kind of bug in, go upstairs from my office to reach your sitting area at TWG, okay. and then I'm like, I can bug for some more things here and there. <laughs> nice, that's great. That's that's good to to know that that um, um, you know, we're here, we're here, and and you know where to find us. That's great. I mean, it helps that we're very close in the same building, so that's great. Yep. Um, even though I'm not there, I'm, I'm in Berlin, but other yeah. people are. Um, great. So let's, let's talk about like um, things that were maybe a bit unexpected or surprising, I would say, about Canada for you. What, what, what kind of took you by surprise? Well, I would say renting a property. That's the okay. only surprising part, I would say. I was not okay. expecting um, that kind of resistance for newcomers because I thought since Canada is used to getting newcomers, people would be a lot adjusted to it. Uh -huh. Fine with people take newcomers taking in rental properties, but there was, so I'm fine with doing a credit check. I had a credit report coming in from India as well. I brought it. I knew there would be some pains. So I had some sort of a credit report, but they were not expecting accepting it. Plus, uh -huh. they're not ready to hand over their apartments to newcomers. So finding an apartment was a big challenge. Okay. Sorry if my baby is around. He, she wants to play with me and I'm like, no, I am <laughs> home today, so I'm not that playing around at the moment. <laughs> sorry for sorry for keeping you from her. We we won't uh, we won't take too much of your time. Uh, that's okay. Short. I'm anyway supposed to work, right? So she's yeah. not used to seeing me at home, but every now and then when I to work from home, she's like, okay, now it's playtime. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. So you, so you get to work from home sometimes. So that's yeah, sort so of... there is a good policy of working from home twice a week. Mm -hmm. I am still not taking that at liberty because I'm still learning a lot of things. I'm still interacting with a lot of people at my team mm -hmm. uh, and my company. So I usually avoid twice a week at least. I end up taking every now and then and every two weeks or so. Okay. Okay. And your team is super comfortable with that. You don't find that like a challenge in terms of I mean, I guess you're, you're still new in the process, so maybe the process, the challenges uh, haven't shown themselves to you, but do you feel like it's something that um, adds value to your work, like having that time to be with your family while you're working and, and kind of being a bit more flexible in your schedule? Oh, um, definitely. Definitely that helps. And I would, uh, I've been doing it. I've been praising this to anybody that I talk to in my company with the amount of flexibility that they have, the amount of, care that they show for their employees. And I guess, I'm not sure if just TWG specific, but as far as I've heard, a lot more companies in Canada work that way, where they kind of are very employee friendly, employee friendly so they give you benefits that you want. They are more focused on getting the work done. They don't care about how you get it done. So if you're working from home, they are fine, but provided you're working, which is a good aspect because that gives you a little bit of flexibility to spend some more time with your family. You have a growing kid, so you can cater to their needs as well. And uh, I was told this about TWG, not exactly perks per se like this, but I was told that TWG is a very employee friendly company by you guys. So that's what I guess also had me making up my mind and kind of moving to that because since I got selected in one of them, employee friendly companies, why not give it a shot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, anything else like uh, about your work experience? Uh, what is what is your um, maybe maybe it makes more sense if you just tell us what does your normal day look like um, when, when you go into the office at, at TWG? Well, at TWG, so a normal day is uh, it's a nine to five kind of a work schedule that I follow. You can follow your own. That's what they say, but that's a nine to five that I generally tend to keep in. Mm -hmm. There are uh, 15 minutes stand-up meetings every day, uh, which can, so based on the project that you are, the timing is decided. 
but apart from that, you are allowed to work on your own, research on your own, figure things out on your own. And if you need help, you are allowed to shout out and buzz anybody in your team or anybody in the company. Even. It doesn't matter who you want to talk to. You can go ahead, approach that person and talk to them. If they are free, they'll respond right then and then, which is usually the case. So people, I am new. I am learning a couple of technologies here as well. Uh, that I am using and I have been shifting projects as well. So in three, in kind of three, three and a half months, I'm on my third project right now. Uh-huh. And that helps. That gives me a lot of exposure. That gives me a lot of opportunities to learn a lot of new things. Uh, plus work on my old skills as well. So, and it's been a very open company. They have been, so my typical day is work on my own, figure things out on my own, attend a couple of calls, which are not too much, which is a good thing. So you get a lot of time to good about things. Mm-hmm. and that's about it and post 5 o'clock uh, there is always a time to gel together work together so the company kind of switches gears uh, and everybody moves from work mode to party mode mm-hmm. where people tend to talk to each other go out for dinners or go out for sports activities there are movie times so that's happened post 5 o'clock on almost like every day or every alternate day so like it's a fun work environment. So you work nine to five, you enjoy post that, whatever time you want to give it. There's no hard and fast mandate for you to do anything of that sort. Mm-hmm. It's just that you are supposed to work for the company for 10 to four bare minimum, and then you can adjust the remaining time based on what work you have. So it's a good flexibility, good environment, good perks, I would say. Nice, okay. That sounds, um, sounds pretty exciting. Maybe I yeah, it is. Um... So far, I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, that's good. Um, and, um, okay. So we, so we, we talked about, um, uh, kind of your work environment and, and all the good things about that. And, um, I wanted to probe a little bit into kind of the difficulties of this transition. You already mentioned a very, very important one, which is, I mean, not an issue just for people immigrating because, um, generally, um, housing is an issue in big cities uh, around the world and especially in Canada. Um, it becomes, it's become like more and more of an issue, but it's nothing that you can't come over. It just takes a bit of patience and perseverance. Um, but other than, other than that, was there anything else that was difficult for you during, um, during your, your transition? I would not say difficult. I would, I would say the most, as I said, getting, gathering all those documents in for that visa process which is a general Canadian standard visa process. So nothing we can do about it anyways. Yeah. But that was the more, the next most challenging part because a lot of it requires you to have your entire pay stubs from all your companies, have experience letters from all your companies. And that is not a generic trend in India where companies give you experience certificates or something of that sort. Mm-hmm. So uh, what I had to do was go back to each of my past employers, ask them for reference letters, uh, they would want me to connect to my old managers. Some of them were there in the company, some of them were not. And in that case, figuring out who could actually kind of say that I worked in that company and what work did I did. So that took some bit of a time, but that was something that is, I guess, Southeast Asia specific where the employers kind of don't hand out reference letters that easily. Yep. And you have to go back to them, uh, get all your reference letters. Since I kind of changed jobs decent enough so I had to go back to four employers and uh, two of them had a standard process behind it two of them had no process behind it so I was like chasing around after even I have to have quit that company for like six years now mm-hmm. but that was the challenging point but nothing respect something that GSH could help me in <laughs> anyways otherwise I would have asked you guys for that as well <laughs> <laughs> okay okay that's fair that's fair um Good. Okay. So, so just to kind of recap it for listeners, um, two of the main hardships that you were experiencing was number one, kind of in the, um, in the, uh, in the, in the visa process, gathering documents, uh, especially kind of uh, your work history, um, uh, was a challenge, which I completely understand. Um, and then the other challenge you mentioned, what once you kind of arrived was getting housing. Um, yep. and it seems to be like a challenge for, for newcomers. Yeah. Because, you know, you have to show credit and someone who's renting to you wants to know whether, you know, what's, what's your status with repaying rent and that sort of stuff. 
but um, uh, it's it's not an unusual problem. I think it's it's pretty common. So okay, uh, so we covered um, two of the big challenges you've had. I do have um, kind of two final questions that I always ask at the end. Um, but before we go into that and kind of wrap this up, there were some questions submitted um, by the community that I'm going to just ask you and and see if you're um, if you're interested in responding to them. Uh, you don't have to answer to all of them. Um, and uh, also, in the meantime, I'd like to ask people who are listening to this, um, whatever channel you're listening it from, uh, you can submit your questions uh, to us uh, in the chat room here, in the Q&A poll, or if you're watching it anywhere else, you could just message us and, and send us the, um, your questions. So I'm gonna try and get these questions over to you. Um, Hopefully by a chat, if I can just direct it to you. Oh, there we go. Okay. And okay. So sorry for the formatting. It's not copy pasting properly, um, but there's a bunch of questions there. Um, so I'm just going to, I mean, you can read the question, but I'm just going to start with one of them, which probably might be okay for you to answer just anyway. So how is Canada on social life side? People say it's boring, dead, and there's no life. What, what do you have to say about that? It's a weird question. Well, no, yeah, it depends. I would say it's the perspective of the person who wants to handle it. Um, and boring is a perspective that each of each on their own, right? So, uh, people who want to enjoy nightlife, I guess there's a lot more to do. If you are into that party circle, and if you want to do that, uh, going out of different bar hopping pubs or going to party, I guess Toronto downtown is the place to be in. Uh, mm -hmm. because, and it's also multicultural people who are looking for uh, enjoying food, multi-ethnicity wise, or if you're okay with experimenting and love to experiment with your food, I guess, again, you would not go wrong in that aspect, I would say. Mm -hmm. If you are looking for something more let's say people who are looking for more scenic kind of, or you're looking for beaches. Well, you are coming to cold weather, not probably gonna enjoy a beach there, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> this is the perspective kind of, so I would not say it's probably a frozen, Probably a frozen beach. If yeah, probably a frozen beach. <laughs> and if you want to enjoy that, that would be one of the experiences to have anyway, so. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would, honestly, so far I haven't got a chance to say if it's boring or likely because I was still settling in, plus settling in with my family, getting things done, settling in at my home. But I would not say it's boring. I would also not say it's too interesting, but I guess everybody can find something or the other to do. So you would not be like stranded alone, uh, left around and feel that you don't have anybody to talk to. Um, that would not, that would, I guess, never be the case with the kind of people that are there. Even. Even if you join any office, uh, I would say my office colleagues are like I, what I've heard are what how Canadians are. So they would kind of ask you to come in, join them in all parties, be a part of their circle, be a part of their sports activities, where I'm also kind of getting invited into. And some of them I've taken in, some of them I've not. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do any of those activities, you will always find somebody or the other who would participate with you. So people are... Generally pretty nice, so you won't get bored. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, okay. That's, uh, I think that makes sense to, to everyone. Um, it, by the way, did you get the questions I sent you or should yeah, I? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay, okay. So uh, I'm also reading at the same time um, questions that have been sent. So if there's any questions there that you'd like to respond to, um, just go ahead while I'm taking two other questions that we have here. So, what do we have? Oh, okay, so Nadia seems to have connection issues. Um, I'm assuming the call quality is okay because I, I guess we're hearing each other um, pretty fine. So, uh, Nadia, you might have to um, disconnect your audio and reconnect. Sometimes that helps with Zoom. Um, uh, so, yeah, I hope that solves your problem. Yeah, I hope so too. 
so okay, far, so, I'm taking the calls in the standard setup that I have. So I'm hoping that it doesn't. I am used to taking calls this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So. Uh, okay. I'm just gonna look at the questions that I sent you. Um. So okay. someone asked about your problem solving and algorithmic skills as, um. As a mobile developer. Yeah. Is it really required to get accepted in the job? If so, how deep have you gone into honing those skills? I mean, we are mobile developers after all, not back end. So what would be your your response to that? Well, yeah, so this is the question even I had when I was trying to prepare for things. So mm -hmm. uh, it happens. And I would say I'm not very too deep into algorithmic skills. I know my basics around it. I know what algorithms do what. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I would say is uh, people back in Southeast Asia, at least, we have that tendency of taking in mobile developers as in just the guys who work on mobile. And that's not the case here. And that's not the case anywhere outside that region. So here you are supposed to work, apart from mobile, you're supposed to do 10 different things, which includes coding for servers at times, which I've been doing for the past two months now, or even making your own web application if needed, because uh, it's a small team always for small projects. Uh, not a lot of big clients have big teams anyways. Uh, so it's not that one person is hardly dedicated to doing only one thing. Yeah. So it's good to have knowledge. It's good to have that uh, algorithmic background. You are not supposed to know a lot more algorithmically or a theoretical set of knowledge. But I would say it's a definite must have to have a problem solving skills. Because that's what your tests are based on. That's what all my interviews were based on. And that is definitely for sure needed. Problem solving in terms of how do you handle with a day-to-day -day scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you are required to code for an elevator, for example, you would say, okay, coding for an elevator is easy. It stops at a few uh, you know, floors. It uh, stops on the press of a button. But it's not that easy. Once you start problem solving it and once you start writing a, just a dummy algorithm for it, you would realize that there, there are a lot of edge cases to consider for. And those are the kind of questions that do come up in almost every other interview that I've seen. Exactly. That's a great point that you mentioned. And uh, I'd like to add, I mean, you've probably experienced this because you, the TWG wasn't the only company you interviewed for. But um, I think almost every company that we work with uh, challenges you those uh, challenges you on, on your problem solving skills and one way or another um, you know they want to know how how you approach challenges what's your thinking process like um, you know how focused you are how much attention to detail you have uh, what kind of solutions you come up with um, and so, so I think you're going to be faced with this regardless of, of what role you're in and, and what kind of um, company you're working at. So I think it, it makes sense to prepare for that. And sometimes it's just a matter of kind of being in the mindset of approaching these challenges um, and kind of brushing up on, on some skills and, and some, um, I guess, theoretical and also problem solving challenges. There's lots of solutions out there for if you want to practice. A um, bunch of free ones as well that you can just kind of use to just to give yourself a bit of practice and uh, get ready. Yep. Um, perfect. Okay, so that was one question that was, from my perspective, probably one of the most important ones. Um, so someone asked, what is your specialty that makes you a success? I don't know how to... Um, clarify that question so maybe just respond to it however you like however it makes sense to you yeah so even uh, i'm not sure what so if you see success in terms of uh, getting an offer or moving from india to canada let's yeah, rate let's, it that let's way. consider that yeah let's say that's that's our <laughs> yeah that's our so then in that case i would say my i'm not too special honestly i am an average joe if you want to call it but yeah uh, before uh, i started to kind of decide to apply for the jobs. I spent a considerable amount of time, you know, owning my skills on problem solving, for example, or uh, creating my profile on Stack Overflow, for example, which is, so uh, back in India, we used to take Stack Overflow for granted, where people would say, okay, I have a problem. I am a developer, what do I do? I Google, I go to Stack Overflow, I find the solution, I use that solution in my code and things work, all good. 
We yeah. don't create our profiles in there. We don't ever try to answer questions in there uh, because we feel that we don't have enough time because every, everybody has that work question. But I guess yeah. that work question is almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. I, I, for, I took a considerable amount of time improving my Stack Overflow profile. I am now there as a top 10, 12% of developers in the world at SO. Mm -hmm. Which I guess uh, excites the companies when you put that link into the profile and company sees your questions and your answers and yep. sees what kind of questions you are asking, what kind of answers you're giving. And that helps them actually know that uh, you know the language that you're talking about. Yep. So improve on those things where you can showcase your skills, have a website probably for yourself. I had it at one point of time, now the server is expired and I have not paid for it. I probably have to renew it. <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, have those things set up, prepare for it before. So once you start doing it, uh, before that, give yourself three to six months of time just to prepare for it. That's what my ideal time frame would be. Otherwise, you would. Uh, it's not that you would not get interviews. You would obviously get interviews because you are technically skilled. Everybody is uh, clearing those interviews and showcasing your skills needs some set of homework. I would say, and you don't need to go and unprepared for it. Yeah. It won't and it won't help if you get rejected by two or three and you're not prepared, you will lose your focus and patience. And that's the end of it. Okay. I think that's uh, that's super valuable advice. Um, we might quote you on that later um, somewhere <laughs> yeah. in our, in our community or, or on the website or something, but that was really, that was really um, good advice. I hope people who are listening um, take note of that. Um, any other, and, and now that we've kind of reached this point, um, in general, what kind of advice would you have um, for for anyone who wants to wants to be in your position, be in your shoes in the next few months? Um, what what would you tell them, or maybe what would you tell yourself if you if you, if you go back a few months in time? Um, I guess what do you think I would I would tell them the same thing that I actually told myself. Uh, the first thing is to have patience. It's not an easy process. It's not everything that is easy and it's not everything that would be served on a plate. So it will take some time. And my process of contacting GSH was in November 2017. I came to Canada in September 2018. That is eight, nine months of patience plus work, of course. And work from everybody's side, work from your side, work from GSH side. So first, to have patience. Second, be prepared. Uh, for anything and everything. Don't focus only your core technologies, but also be prepared for answering problems, solving things outside your technologies. Like, yep. just have a brief idea. Don't, I'm not saying have, learn every technology. That's impossible for everybody. But have a brief idea about what technology uses what. So let's say JavaScript is for front end or Node.js is for back end. At least know these much details so that you're not just a mobile developer. And once you land, there is one piece of advice that I would say is, Reach out to people, reach out to GSH guys for anything and everything that you need. Reach out to all of us who have actually came in. And there is a group of us. And there are a lot of WhatsApp groups from each region as well uh, that GSH guys have created and we kind of are connected to it. Uh, people shy away from reaching out in a case of any scenarios and spend a lot of time figuring out things on their own. But uh, reach out to other guys and probably you'll see you'll get a lot faster help because we have done all done it just now and we are very fresh in our minds with it. And I think your life would be a lot easier. <laughs> Perfect, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much. Um, and finally, what are you looking forward to for you? In the future? Uh, yeah, like what, what is, what do you think is next? What, what is, uh, what would excite you? Um, uh, in terms of your career or life, um, what, what, the journey that you've kind of started, what do you see um, coming up for you next? Well, uh, there's a short term, there's a long term goal that I always have. My short term goal for now, for next couple of years, is to relax and work and enjoy the North American, you know, continent that I am in. Move around, travel. Travel is one of my always one of my first, you know, primary goals anywhere that I go in. Yeah. and then keep on working. My long-term goal is probably, I had that going partially in India where I had my own, uh, you know, company set up and working for myself. 
my long term goal is to have that company set up in canada then maybe tie up with gss and get more people in <laughs> <laughs> sounds good sounds like a good idea we'll we'll take you up on that offer later yeah yeah okay. definitely <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so um, Kapil, it was lovely talking to you. I don't want to take up too much of your time and let you get back to your family and work. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed this conversation as much as I did, and I hope they took notes. I think there was a lot of valuable bits of um, uh, gold and uh, you know life-saving or life-transforming information there. Small things make a big difference on this journey. Um, and that's probably what anyone else who's, who's done this will, will tell you. Um, thank you so much for sharing and uh, being open and then communicating with our, with our um, community. We're trying to get more people engaged and, and get our community to um, um, kind of use your experience to help them through their journey. And um, that's it. I just wanted to say that we're, we're grateful. So um, I'll say I'm grateful for you guys helping me out in all those things. So anything and everything that I can do for community would be, uh, would I would be more than happy to do it. And plus, uh, as I said, reach out to folks, reach out to me if you want to, at any given point of time, since I did it just now. And I would be probably very much happy to help anybody with it. Perfect, great. Um, Thank you again. Have a great day, Kapil, and hopefully we'll talk again soon sometime. Yep, sure. You guys as well. Have a nice day. See you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, everybody, one last note. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to Adeline or anyone else on our team with your questions. Um, thank you, participants.